Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. I hope you enjoy this channeling video. Now today I have actually had two people on my mind to chat with. Um, and I'm gonna see which one of these men come forward first. And they're very, um, they're very different. So let's just kind of feel into the energy. Give myself a moment to just ground and center. Very aware of my physical existence and my physical body. A lot of grateful energy, a lot of thankful gratitude, appreciation for my life as it is here and now. Feeling that. Knowing that it's only through my human life existence and experience that I can be fully myself in my soulful purpose, and that is to be a channel, a bridge, a sacred bridge, and that is a gift I feel so, so grateful for to actually have my purpose as being a bridge. Mm, okay, here he comes. Um, ladies and gentlemen of our audience, Mr. Tom Petty. Now, I am gonna welcome his energy kind of here off to my left. And I'm gonna share with you that if you've watched some of my work previously, you'll know that when I chatted with Prince a couple of times, he's referred to Tom Petty. He's actually mentioned Tom Petty. Like I've seen Tom Petty before in um, a channeling I did with Prince. He just kind of showed up. And then Prince actually referred to him just recently too in the week that I did of Prince videos. That's actually a playlist if you're interested. There's a playlist of videos for, about Prince and uh, channeling and connecting with him. And he um, mentioned Tom Petty's guitar. He says he's a great guitar player. So that's what I know about you um, is that you're an incredible guitar player. That's what Prince says. And from Prince, you know that's a major compliment slash accomplishment because Prince is like real particular about guitars and musicians and he's very very specific about uh, criteria for quality and so so Tom Petty you have that a nod from Prince he all but he said he gave you a little bit of shade and he said hey but I don't like your brand of guitars so whatever you use um, he doesn't like it and he said something, okay, so, so Tom, when I have connected with you before, you've been real quiet, like you don't have a lot to say, like when you've come in with Prince and you feel like a man of few words. I don't know a lot about you. I know the only song I know about you is, uh, there's like a learning to fly song. People who are fans are gonna be screaming at the YouTube video right now. <clears throat> Sorry fans, I really don't know. I'm new to Tom Petty, but I'm willing to chat with him. Um, so Tom, uh, and he says, when you talk with Prince, when you're on Prince, you kind of just naturally take a step back. He says, you can't real co really compete with that. You know, that's kind of a big, and he's like, it's not ego. He says, it's a big icon right there. He said, so I don't want, you know, I don't want to get into that shade, he says. So, um, Tom, can you share with me a little bit about the guitar thing? You and Prince? He says, oh man, man, he, he can really just, he can really play. Prince can really play. So, so that, yeah, I think, I think that's a, a good compliment. So um, he's telling me um, some of his influences he's sharing and he's, he's not, so clear audience is the ability to hear spirit or to translate energy information into like an auditory format and so you listen up a level. I want to be really clear. A lot of times when spirit speaks, they don't um, just come in and say, hi, so-and-so, I'm here. I mean, that's not how it works, really. We have to tune in. So we listen up a level is how I describe it. And so um, I'm listening into his words. And he's not real chatty. Like, that doesn't feel like the the energy is coming through in that way. It feels more like it's coming through an information in the heart. Oh, very heart. He says there's a heart on one of my albums or with a song or something or a logo or something that he showed me this heart and then I see like this kind of looks like a wing or a feather or something on the side. I don't really know what that is, but I can see a heart logo kind of thing. And uh, he said, if you look, you can see that, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. Um, <clears throat> 
And then he's showing me like these circles that look like lollipops. That's how I would describe them, or pinwheels. Um, you know, those colored lollipops with all the different colors and they're big and they're a swirl, 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 swirly pinwheel kind of energy. I see that too. So I don't know if he's referring to an album cover. He's showing me like what looks either like, either like Santa Monica Pier in California or, um, and I've been to that area. I can't remember being on Santa Monica Pier for years, maybe when I was really little, like toddler, young, young, eight years old or something. But I vaguely remember that. Um, so I don't know if it's actually that or if it's, we're talking more East Coast, like um, some kind of pier down there, like New Jersey, Jersey area or something. He's like, no, he's like, no, California. Okay, California. I feel a California vibe connection tie for you. I don't know if you were born and raised there. There's also a Chicago tie for Tom. I can feel the Chicago tie. I don't know what that is. Chic, chic, C-H-I. Um, he's showing me musical influences that he had, like the Doobie Brothers, he sang, and the Traveling Wilburys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Roy Orbison. Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, looking up to Roy Orbison like, yeah, Roy Orbison. Um, and then Tom says to me, you know, I, I know that, and he's got a black leather jacket on. Um, I think it's black. It might be like a darker gray, or either that or it's like a cracked leather, so it's older or something. Uh, not super black, but kind of a lighter black or a shade of gray, maybe even. Um, I like the details, but I can see the cracking along the thing. It's like a favorite. He's like, it's a favorite, it's a favorite. I feel like you might have belonged to somebody else. Like he, he might have some kind of, do you have memorabilia from somebody? He says, he's like, shh, like kind of like, hey, it's supposed to be a secret. Um, and he says, he says some Roy Orbison's glasses. I don't know. I don't know why he brought that up. Um, anyway, he's saying to me personally, he says, I know you've been interested in Memphis. It's come up. He's right. It's come up the last week several times. I did another casual conversation with Elvis and uh, did a channel with him a couple weeks ago and then I had a client from actually from Nashville and so I, I, I just really was drawn to Memphis so I looked it up online I looked up a, a YouTube site um, for Memphis and I watched I watched some of the um, some of the historical landmarkers and stuff around there and I think that if I go there there's so much I could channel and connect to. I mean, as even aside from Elvis, because there's so much music there. And he says, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. And he said, that studio that you saw, I saw um, like Sun Studio. I saw that. And there are a lot of different people, a lot of musicians that recorded there. And um, a traveling Wilburys, why do I see that? Um, and he's just, he's just giving me a nod, like, you should go check it out. You really should go check it out. It's, it's that city's got a lot of spirit. It's got a personality of its own, Memphis does. Interesting, okay. Um, but I feel like you have a Chicago tie. I said, yes, I do. I feel like there's family there or in that area. I'm Midwest too, I'm Minnesota. He says, yes, I know, ma'am, Minneapolis. Yes, I know, ma'am, Minneapolis. He says, the Minneapolis sound. That's why your prince loves you so much. <laughs> Just because I'm a local, huh? Yeah, I like California, too. I'd like to go visit there. He said, yeah, I spent a lot of time in California. Um, so I feel like there's a Beach Boys tie. I have no idea why that is. Why is there a Beach Boys tie? He says something about the guitar or the studio. A studio with, like, a guitar lo logo? I don't know. I'm confused here. There's multiple things. Like, I see a surfboard. I see the beach in California. I see... Um, like, and then I, I feel the words, I don't hear them, I don't see, I don't hear music, but I, I feel the words kind of starting to show up of Beach Boys, the Beach Boys, and I know that there's an iconic picture of them with their, carrying their surfboard, and he's saying something about the location of that. I feel like it's the, is it the location? See, Tom, I'm having a hard time, like, uh, he's soft-spoken, you guys, he's real soft-spoken. He says, well, you talk a lot. <laughs> Friends should have told you that. I'm a chatty, chatty person. 
Okay. Um, so he says, yeah, that whole, uh, that whole vibe, you know, that whole generation just, even if you play different styles of music, you really connect. So he says, I'd say that some of my influences were country, bluegrass, definitely have an appreciation for Roy and Elvis and yeah, the Beach Boys. He says, ah, you might be surprised to hear that I played some of that music early on. I would, would I be? I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't know. Oh, my eyes are kind of watering a little bit. That's interesting. Usually I feel that when I feel an incredible amount of emotion. Like, and then I see surfing, like the ocean again, like, and I want to say the Beach Boys. And I feel like he either was, somehow there's a connection there, you guys. And I don't know what it is, but I know that some of you fans might know what it is. Either he lived near where they lived, or he knew them well, or he played with them, or practiced with them, or they shared some kind of, um, it could have been geographic space. I feel like it's location, locale, for some reason. So that feels like they were either in contact or um, some kind of a connection there. He sang when I, early on when I was playing in clubs in L.A. Um, I met some real interesting characters, he says. Um, okay. Oh, that's weird. I feel like they're, I'm not sure how to interpret this, but I feel like he's showing me kind of dark, like um, early on in the clubs, like playing at different clubs. Maybe it's, is it the Viper Room? Um, in LA and he's like kind of some darkness you know that there's a lot of drugs and there's a lot of sadness he said that people are trying to numb people try to numb their pain and he's acknowledging he said I did that I did that and so what were you trying to numb or what kind of sadness he says lost opportunities you know you get to a point in your life and you look at your life and you think who, who am I? Like, how did I get here? He's like, he's thinking. He says, you look at a point in your life and you get, you get to a point in your life, he says, when you can't help but ask, how did, I, how did I get here? I'm not talking about the fans and entertaining or playing shows. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the relationships, it feels like. Is it relationships? I feel like he has a daughter. I feel like he has at least one child. Um, I see a really pretty blonde lady that he may have either married or um, had a child with. I feel like he's a thinker, like he's a complicated thinker. Um, I can see him doing a lot of songs and then I keep seeing like any things that are referred to flying. Like I don't know if he is talking about airplanes, like I literally keep seeing an airplane like uh, wings of an airplane, like a cartoon kind of airplane or something, or a logo airplane kind of thing, not an actual airliner. Um, and no, I don't think it's a reference to being high. I don't think that. Um, and then he says to me, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I don't know if that's a sound. I know that that's a band. Um, I don't know if he's related or connected to them in some way, or if he liked their sound, or if they were at the same time coming up. I'm not sure. Again, I, I don't know. Free Falling, that's the name of the song that I liked of yours, that I know of yours. That's really the only song that I know, to be honest with you, I think. That's the only song I know. Um, really, a lot of music. He is like a writer, 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 writer. Like him and Prince, like same thing in common, like just write, 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 write. And sad, there's some sadness there. Like it's mellow, he's really mellow, really kind of calm, his energy demeanor. But there is a sadness, like he feels like missed opportunities, like he missed out. And it feels like in the area of like relationships, um, he says, you can't really be a normal guy. You can't be a normal person because everybody, you're not sure when you meet somebody if they're meeting you because of the stardom, the fame or if they're if they are are drawn to you because of you know what you have inside of you you don't really know that it takes some time to kind of figure that out and that that time i mean you don't have that luxury of time you know especially when you're traveling and you're out on the road i feel like he might have a son too i just see a young man playing guitar which might be his son 
Um, or somebody that you mentored. No, I think it's a son. Potentially, it could be a stepson. Oh, that's weird. I don't understand. Three times. I don't know what that means. I don't know if he had three kids or if he was married three times. I don't know. I feel like he, it feels like he can't commit. Like he can't follow through. He's sharing that he couldn't follow through, like in relationships with his responsibilities or with his, you know, uh, giving people what they deserve as far as personal relationship. I mean, it's much easier, he says, to do that on stage because it's just a one night thing. You're, you play a show, you move on to the next thing and you have your material, you have your, your songs, you have the music and that's what keeps you company. And then you go to the next city and you do the same kind of music, but it's with a different crowd, you know? So you have, there's not, um, it's like saying the routine things that you do, you know, like mow the lawn and take out the garbage and stuff. He's like, I, that's not the kind of guy. I couldn't be that kind of guy because I didn't have the chance to be that kind of guy. Would I want to be that kind of guy? Yeah, it'd be nice to just be that kind of guy. And like I show him living in like an apartment or a skyscraper or something, like a tall building, not like a house with a fence or, you know, the whole picket, picket fence, white, you know, white little picket fence in the house and the suburbia. I don't see that at all for him. But I kind of feel like he feels like he missed out on that. And there's a sadness about not th being having his own family um, close, I guess. He says, you know, we did the best we could. He says, you know, I'm not saying that I royally screwed it up. I'm just saying, and I really, I royally, he says, I, I'm not saying I royally, royally screwed it up. I'm just, I am saying that I, you know, I, I maybe missed, you know, that opportunity. But it's kind of funny, isn't it, how a lot of famous people, I think, if you ask them, would say, that they want some of the simple things that some of you take for granted. You know, being able to bring the garbage out to the curb without having people there taking pictures of your drones in the sky. Said, so, do you know that? You check that out, like drones in the sky flying over your swimming pool and stuff. That's just crazy. Like my, it's like my, how, how did the world become that? Can't we just go back to simpler times, you know? Can't we just do that? And I see him playing acoustically. I see your, a guitar without, um, juice in it <laughs> without plugged in without electricity yeah you know just just being on stage just with a guitar a simple guitar just popping up and just singing I mean just being there that's you know that's 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 when you know you love your craft you know that's when you're in that space where it's just like you're in the, kind of in the zone, you know. That's that's what that's what you live for is that. And that simple times, you know. It's kind of like he's reminiscing, like the simple times, the simpler times, and kind of like he feels like he missed out on some of that simple stuff. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Hey, um, I don't recall off the top of my brain when you died or how you died. Um, 2016 or 17? 15? It was recent, the last couple of years. Oh, that's weird. I don't really, I'm not, you guys, I'm not medical, so myopathy, myopathy, something. Um, I don't know what that even means. I'm feeling like your body just gave up, kind of. That's how it feels like to me. That's the description. Like, he's not talking a lot about it. Like, I don't know if you had, he said self-inflicted. Um, but a lot of times, it's interesting. So this is interesting, you guys. You'll notice this in the other videos that I do when I do channeling is a lot of times the spirit will take accountability for their own crossing, for their own death. Even if it wasn't by suicide or it wasn't by like an overdose, accidental overdose or accidental death or that kind of thing. Like they didn't necessarily intend to die. Um, but a lot of times they'll just take responsibility for it because like Tom's saying, like a lot of years of hard, hard work hard um, treatment of the body and kind of just your body just gave up he's like my body just gave up it's like I'm done you know um, and I feel like the heart that's what I feel like it could be a mild stroke like a heart it feels like the heart to me that's what it feels like but it doesn't feel like it was uh, it would have been natural uh, in his lifespan had he not been like this famous person that did hard um, to be honest, I feel like he did hard drugs and stuff early on or really, you know, he's like, no, that's okay. I'm, my body been through the ringer. 
no, no, my body, I put my body through hell, he says, yeah, I put my body through hell. <clears throat> Can you talk to me a little bit about um, what it feels like or what it felt like to move into the afterlife, to leave human body experience and move into the afterlife? Can you talk about that a little? Just real peaceful, he says, really peaceful. It's kind of odd though, he says, it's kind of odd because it's like you see both scenes at the same time. So you see the body and whatever's being done to save the body. It's really surreal. And then, but you feel, you don't feel the same as what you see. Like you see the body really fighting, you know, to try to stay alive or people around trying to fight to keep the body alive. And they don't know you're already dead. Like your spirit is already out of your body, but the body itself just isn't quite, the machine of the body isn't quite done yet. And uh, it's kind of surreal because you see what's going on with the body and your brain is still un knowing enough, you're connected enough to understand that there's like stuff going on to try to help the body. The body is trying to do it itself or you might have other people around you trying to save you, save the body. But he says, but you're already dead. Like you're already in this, the spirit. Like you say, your spirit's already detached and it's watching and you can see this and you have all the senses but you don't have any pain. I just felt peace. So it's kind of this I irony. You see all this, you know all this, but yet there's this in just a tremendous peace energy, just peacefulness, he says, peacefulness. This is real peaceful, that's how, that's how I describe it. And then he says something about his, his mom and his sister, and then his grandma. Um, I'm not sure who's here and who's on the other side. I know grandma's on the other side, but I don't know if his mom and his sister were here. I'm not sure if he's showing me what I'm looking at here or an afterlife. And then he's showing me he's buried someplace. I almost feel like uh, Hollywood. I have a star. Here's a star. Um, Hollywood Walk of Fame, Hollywood. Forever Cemetery, Hollywood Hills, Hollywood. I think he's buried in LA and I know he was cremated, is what he shows me. But I feel like his ashes may have been separated. So somebody either took, this might be personal. I hope this isn't too personal. If a family member is watching, I don't mean to be, um, I don't mean to intrude upon your privacy, but he's sharing with me that um, part of his ashes were saved or were, were taken away from the big ashes so somebody either has it or the intention was to scatter some of the ashes so I feel like that there's a place that you could visit to pay your respects to Tom Petty but I don't feel like he necessarily would have wanted that specifically and so he wanted to be free and um, you know and I even see like near the ocean so so there's that all right well, thank you for sharing that I appreciate it do you have any advice about life for us do you have any advice about life? <laughs> he smiles, he says, keep on living. Just li live. This is what you've got. This is what you've got. So, you know, this is what you've got. He said, live. That's pretty much it. That's all he says. Which... Thank you, Tom, because that, thank you, I'm gonna reach over, thank you. That is exactly the intention in part of Above Life Channel, to inspire the spirit and to fill you up with hope. And remember, it's your life, so live it. That is one of our mantras here at Above Life Channel. So thank you, Tom, thank you very much. If you have specific questions for Tom, Tom Petty, we've been talking with him today. Please post them in the comments below. I don't, like I said, I don't know much about Tom. I know he's kind of a quiet guy, under, uh, soft-spoken, underspoken. And so I hope I did my best here um, to bring forward the energy of what he was trying to communicate or wanting to share. And um, if you like this video, please click like. If you know somebody that's a Tom Petty, Tom Petty fan, you can share it with them. I'm sure they'll be telling me what they think and that's totally fine here hey go ahead and share your comments i'd like to hear from people who know 
who know the facts. So go ahead and do that. And then um, subscribe. Make sure you click that red bell on, on YouTube to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new weekly channel. Thank you for being here. <laughs>